Sleeper Wire, the only fantasy football radio show with more than a dozen multi-time, multi-league, multi-year champions. Listen to the Sleeper Wire show every Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Dash Talk. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Sleeper Wire Show. Woo! Yeah, I am pumped up right now, guys. I am your host, Nick Sumrall, and of course, I've got my wonderful co-host joining me today. We've got Dirty Jobs Mike in the building. What's happening? And returning to the show, Julian. What's going on? It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a while, but he's here because... uh, Maybe he's got Deshaun Watson on his fantasy team and is like has to complain, or you know, maybe he's maybe he's got Zeke Elliott. He's got something to talk about. It probably has to do with him, so that's why he's here. Yeah, I, I got to, I got a lot I got a lot to let out. <laughs> uh, but it's good to have you back on in all seriousness, and uh, we really have a lot for you guys today to talk about. Uh, there's just been so much going on. We record this as of Thursday. This will be out to you Friday just so you guys are aware when you're listening to this. So if anything else breaks open and we haven't covered it, that's why. But listen, you guys can reach out to us on Twitter, and we're going to give you all that information at the end of the show, so don't worry about it. But with that being said, let's just jump right in it, guys, because we got the news. We're going to try and cover some of the games, maybe all the games if we're lucky. We'll see. But we're definitely going to cover all the news that's been breaking. So first things first, as I mentioned, Deshaun Watson found out today that he tore his ACL in practice. What the hell were they doing in practice that makes him tear his ACL? Yeah, tough break, man. It was also a non-contact injury, so, you know, those are just the worst. Right, right. So, you know it's definitely an ACL. Yeah. So, here's the thing, guys. I mean, not only was Deshaun Watson a clear-cut quarterback one with the way he had been playing, but now this this really makes an impact on the offense as a whole. I mean, Will Fuller, I, I can't see him continuing this stretch of where he's getting multiple touchdowns nope. off of limited catches. So Will Fuller to me, I can't I can't vouch for you to start him. Same goes for Hopkins. Hopkins you could start. You can still start Hopkins, but I don't see the the consistency of production of either of these guys. That's yeah, no. it doesn't look like it's going to be a good match right there. Savage is just a terrible, terrible quarterback. I didn't like what I saw of him at the beginning of the season. I I think you take a couple steps back on DeAndre Hopkins, but I still think you start him. But Will Fuller, he's definitely hitting the bench. I'm trying to trade him any leagues where I picked him up. If anyone grabs him, but there might be someone out there. Yeah, I, there might be, but it, it's, it's really hard to say at this point. I mean, you just uh... – yeah, it's it's bad news all around. Even Lamar Miller's production is going to go down with whatever he had anyway. Not that it was uh, anywhere elite, but his production takes a hit as well. They were I, I all mean, a product of they were all a product of Watson in a way. Uh, I guess you know more or less better than flex players now. I mean, I I yeah. still think Hopkins will get the targets just because he is the top receiver and. I mean, let's face it, Savage is still slightly better than Brock Osweiler was last year, so you got to figure he'll still have his games. But as of now, I mean, I don't know if I'm in full drop Will Fuller mode. Just because, no. I mean, I mean, because he's the backup quarter. You know, we got the backup quarterback coming in. And, I mean, yeah, he looked pitiful in the first game, but that was also against a really tough Jacksonville defense. So I, I don't know what the outcome's going to be. But just just temper your expectations. They're definitely, everybody's getting impacted here and going to produce less. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, anything else to add to that, guys? Uh, nope. I think we covered it. Right. Yeah, I think we're done yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on then because we got some Zeke Elliott news, guys. It is looking more and more like he is going to be suspended and serve the six-game suspension, which is uh, yeah, I, I think it's official now. I think it's 
I think he's officially suspended. For Not good. until tomorrow. We won't Six. know 100% until really? tomorrow. But Right. Mm. There's a slim chance, though, at right. this point. The lawyers are saying like that. Fourth, they, yeah. Fourth and 35. Right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're saying it's a <laughs> slim chance that he gets to play this week. And, and if he's not playing this week, that means he ain't playing for the next six weeks. Yep. So, right. That's the way I understand it, too. So let, let me ask you this. At this point, then, do you guys say to yourselves that, you know, are in positions where maybe, you know, you're seven and one or six and two and just about clear cut going to make it to the playoffs. Do you say to yourself, boy, maybe I try to make a trade for Zeke Elliott. I've been getting this question a lot. And my best answer to that is I think that you can go for Ezekiel Elliott in that position. But the thing that kind of scares me is the people, people are trading for him. Remember this guy's sitting the bench for six weeks. So he's not going to be productive for those six weeks. So don't trade like your LaShawn McCoy's for him or anything like that. I've been fielding a lot of really weird ones on Ezekiel Elliott in his post suspension. And every team I'm dealing with is seven, one, six, and two in that method. But to me, just don't overpay for him. And that, that can work out. Yeah. I mean, I think you got to be smart about it. Julian, what do you think? No, I, I completely agree. I, you know, for a second, I was thinking, well, you know, you don't want to pay too high for it for him right now, you know, especially, you know, just going off of what Mike just said. But the longer you wait, too, because I was going to say maybe you can make the trade like three weeks down the road. But then that owner is probably definitely not going to let him go at that time. So if you want to get him, this is the best time to get him. You just can't pay too high. Yeah. I mean, once once the news is official that he's suspended. And again, we really here do expect that to be the case. You got to make that move almost immediately. You can't really drag your feet on it. But as we're saying, you can't pay up too high. I mean, let's let's try to think of what what do you guys think would be a fair trade if if you're the Zeke owner, you you find out you're you know you have Zeke out now, mm. maybe you have Mark Ingram, Mark Chris, Ingram. I was thinking Mark Ingram, Christian McCaffrey, somebody to that factor. Would you Devontae trade Freeman? Would you, would you do, do Devontae Freeman? I wouldn't I do Devontae Freeman. I think it's yeah. too high. What about Jordan? Howard? I think that's where it's too high. Jordan Howard is about probably where I draw the line on my nose. I don't think I'd trade He's Jordan probably Howard right for him. There. He's probably right there, yeah. Uh, don't think I would. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know what's crazy is I saw a statistic on Jordan Howard. I know, listen, I I touted him up all offseason. I know he's not having the lights out type of season that maybe I was hoping for. But then again, I didn't, I didn't say he was going to be, you know, uh, the the number one overall pick next year in your fantasy draft either. So, but mm -hmm. my point is, I saw a stat. He is getting such a heavy workload in this offense. I mean, he is only behind Le'Veon Bell as far as his workload work produ workload production. Excuse me. That, I mean, that's, that's, that's 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 great. I, I I think I think if I think it depends on your depth, right? So like, if you happen to have an um maybe a Leonard Fournette on your on your roster and then you have like Alvin Kamara and maybe you got, maybe you got McFadden or something yeah. and then maybe, yeah. And then maybe, yeah, I would trade Mark Ingram right there probably or something or, uh, or Jordan Howard maybe. Yeah. I mean, it really depends on your depth guys. Just be smart. You know, if you guys have your questions, you know, you can always go to sleepwire.com. You can interact with us on Twitter or on Sleeperbot. We're all there and you can, you know, reach out to us. We'll answer that question for you. Just give us a scenario. We'll, we'll try to help you out with that because everybody's really going to have an individual situation. It's hard for us to tackle, you know, Absolutely. one. Yeah. So, all right, let's go into trade deadline madness. Whew. Guys, I mean, this is, I don't know about you, but I don't remember the trade deadline being this chaotic with so many important moves that take place uh, you know I, I mean the last big move i remember for trade deadline was percy harvin right yeah <laughs> nope you don't see receivers especially getting traded and when you watch kelvin benjamin go to buffalo it was like wow jay that, and that to philadelphia was... like i was just shocked, shocked. yeah even jimmy Those garoppolo even jimmy garoppolo going to the 49ers I mean, that I'm happy huge. about that one for him, at least. But yeah, I mean, listen, it's unfortunate the Patriots get something out of Jimmy Garoppolo. I was hoping they wouldn't, and they would just have to get rid of him at free agency. But you know, it's it's good for him, and uh, you know, I, I mean, it's it's just funny the buildup that was there for Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, after the draft, 
Garoppolo, they wanted a first and a second round pick for next year's draft. Oh, wow. That's and they, uh, and they said it with the second round. Yeah. So <laughs> let's, let's start with the first one though. Uh, let's start with Kelvin Benjamin who the report said he is supposed to play in tonight's game. No, he's not playing in tonight's game. He's out. Yeah, officially. I thought they said he I thought that I saw that a report saying he thought played. that was the thought but they changed oh, it. Okay. He is not going to play tonight. So. Yeah. I oh, mean okay. I mean we, we we can start off with that. I mean I I it makes sense that he's out just because yes. he's he's new to the team. He doesn't know the playbook. Um and it's just a whole new environment for him. He's probably he's going to it's probably a bit chillier. He's probably not used to this weather. I mean, it it just makes sense, but it all I can also see a, a a case where you want him out there. But they have a good record right now. They're five and two. I don't think there's a rush. So right. I mean, listen, I agree. I I thought when I saw the news earlier, I I could have sworn that was like ridiculous. It was two days. How can a guy prepare that quick? But you know, if uh, yeah, you're right. I looked it up. Uh, made sure. Yeah, he's definitely not playing in this game. Which is good because you need somebody like that to adjust to the offense. It's unfortunate for you guys who own him in fantasy that couldn't start him this week, but right. I think it's going to pay dividends for the future. I right. think this is the perfect move for him. Yeah, I agree. I think I think he's going to fit into that offense really well, and I think he's going to be very mm-hmm. fantasy productive. I'm actually trying to target him in a few leagues right now. Yeah, and I love yeah, Lashawn McCoy. And Lashawn McCoy really now has some help to get the teams from stacking the box against them absolutely yeah yeah real quickly terrible for the panthers i think that was a just a complete shocker they just got rid of their number one i don't know i mean uh, that was cam's security blanket he has to adjust i mean they've played a season pretty much without kelvin once and he that was i think cam's mvp season but it's (laughs) not an easy transition it's not an easy transition to do so that team i don't see much upside for that team i see more more touches for mccaffrey maybe and uh, i don't know how much consistent everyone else will be and then as for 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 the bills i see tyrod like a top 10 play probably you know once kelvin starts playing and you know that whole offense yeah i, I you know listen i think i think with calvin benjamin gone devin funches is still gonna probably eat a lot of the targets there and Christian McCaffrey will get some. And we're going to have to wait and see what happens between Russell Shepard and Curtis Samuel, the rookie. So, well, and Greg you know, Olson coming names. back, too. Greg Olson coming back is going to be fed as well. I mean, he he was really on fire in the year that uh, Julian mentioned when Kelvin yeah. Benjamin wasn't there. I mean, Gre- uh, Greg Olson got his that season. So he's going to be a great play when he comes back. So if he's yeah. on waivers, I definitely recommend you snagging him up now because he should yeah. be a top five tight end the rest of the season. Agreed. So now let's talk about J.J. going to the Eagles, guys. So, oh, I mean, the offense has been on fire with Carson Wentz. The team has really looked great. And now we've got somebody who's been completely subpar this season going to a team with an offense that might be able to help him out. I, I'm still not a JGI believer, but I have to imagine that they didn't trade for him just for him to sit on the bench. So I'd mm-hmm. imagine at some point he will take over the job and basically relieve LeGarrette Blunt of much work. What are you thinking? I think it's going to be JGI's backfield to lose. I think he's going to get back there. I think he might even get out there as soon as this Sunday and just rip it up. I think he's going to fit into that offense very well. I think he's going to be running angry for getting traded. He's going to try to prove that Miami should have kept him. I think I really like JHI this weekend. I, I can I can see that, but are they going to give him that opportunity? Is is are the Eagles going to give him the ball that much? I mean, I know for now, Blunt is still their number one. I can see that scenario. I can see that scenario though. JHI is probably probably furious. He was furious when they stuck Arian Foster over him, and then. They got rid of Arian Foster, and he came out there guns blazing and doing all them, you know, those 300 yards you know, for whatever, for how long he, he did that. But 200. Yeah. <laughs> and it was three games. And it was three games. But he came <laughs> out he came out the gates that way, so I can see that scenario where that happens. But it's like, he, will he get those opportunities? And he's, you know, I, that's just, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, would you say that... If somebody asked you, should I start JHI this week, what would your answer be to them? I would say I mean, yes. If, 
if you have them, I guess you, you have to. Right? right, because we got to look at the situation, guys. We've got a lot of teams on by this week, and I hate these big bye weeks. This is probably, for me personally, this is the worst week of fantasy because I have so many of my top players out on by. <laughs> I mean, I've got, you know, I've got Jordan Howard. I've got, you know, then you have Le'Veon Bell who's out on a bye, Antonio Brown. You've got, uh, you know, Stefan Diggs, Jarek McKinnon, Melvin Gordon, Keenan Allen, Patriot. Yeah, you know, this you is got a Tom tough... Brady, Gronk. It's, it's yeah, incredible. This is a t- there's six teams. There's six yeah. teams on buys. I, th- I Hopefully, and I think this is the week where this many teams have a buy. So, uh, yeah. What are you, so, how are, you, how are you dealing with it? <laughs> oh, I mean, the best I can. Luckily, luckily. Somebody today was an idiot and dropped Alfred <laughs> Morris to waivers. So I'm oh, try- wow. so and I'm number one in waiver priority. So I'm going to try and snag him. Who'd up. you pay off? Who'd you uh, pay off? You paid him off. Paid yeah, him off? I, I wish I did. <laughs> well, actually, no. I'm glad I didn't have to. I'm getting him for free. <laughs> and he pay- and, and, and you know, listen. There's some stupid people out there in in leagues, and sometimes I just I get fortunate enough to play with them. And this guy, it's in one of my money leagues, too. So you would think you would pay attention a little more in those kind of leagues. He dropped Alfred Morris for Alex Collins. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, and he's a Dallas fan. So I don't understand if he's got some inside intel or what, but I, I, I don't get it. Uh, uh, so. And then, and then in uh, my other money league, I picked up Alfred Morris and Darren McFadden because they were both on waivers. That's nice. That's crazy. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what, what's did we did we did we already talk about that backfield? We I mean, talk we we talked now. We you know what we really <laughs> we just talked about the Zeke news. We just talked about Elliot. Yeah, right. So <laughs> look at us. We're so professional. We'll we'll, we'll <laughs> I bought it up. So now we're going to talk about it. Who who is the guy? I think it's Alfred Morris. <laughs> I think I it's Alfred segment. Morris for sure. I've always said Alfred Morris though too. I've been high on him. Just looking the activity, looking at who they're using, and Darren McFadden's been a healthy scratch. Right. Apparently and the, the argument about, is, a, yeah, the, apparently yeah. the rumor about him being held up for Zeke to get suspended is not true. That's that's exactly how I thought of it too. I don't know why he was inactive. Uh, I guess they wanted to have Rod Smith come out there for a bit, but McFadden has a history with this with this team, so. Uh, so my feeling was they kept him out of the games for this situation so that he doesn't get hurt because they're going to be using him. But I don't know. It just sounds like a mess right now. And they're going to be like, um, you know, the last reports were saying that they're all going to get touches. They really like Rod Smith. And, you know, he can end up being a, a sneaky, a sneaky, a sneaky one to come up to the top of the chart, um, death chart. So I don't know. I have McFadden and Rod Smith on my on my money main main league uh, money. I see. I, money if, if this week, I think that you can start Alfred Morris. You can start Darren McFadden, but I, I I truly believe that Alfred Morris will be the guy. He's been he's been on the field, uh, the backup to Zeke Elliott. You know, and and listen, Darren McFadden, he's getting old. He's getting old. Go with the younger guy. I don't. I don't understand why you would trust in Darren McFadden over a young Alfred Morris, who can run the ball really well, especially behind this offensive line in this offense. Yeah, yeah. No, I, for me, it's I, I Alfred want, Morris I, I all to... day. What was that, yeah. Julian? Well, no, no. I, I, you just reminded me earlier. I, I wanted to do this earlier. I was. I wanted to look at their ages and see who was older. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot to do that. I wanted to do that at, at work today. <laughs> Alfred Morris is younger. But okay, so yeah, Alfred Morris is young. Yeah, I guess so. I guess. Well, okay. For now, this is what I was gonna Wait, say. Wait, you now, guess this he's week, younger? I mean, that's that's kind of hard to. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I guess it'll be Morris. But for this week, for sure, one hundred percent, it is Morris this week for sure. Yeah, I mean, listen, it could change. You know, Alfred Morris could have a shitty week. It's very possible, mm-hmm. but. If he plays well, you can guarantee he'll be the guy. So, yep. and, and they have and they they have a tough matchup, but I think it's a high scoring matchup against Kansas City. I don't, you know, their defense doesn't really scare me, Kansas City. So, especially with Eric Berry out for the year, 
So, I mean, I think this is a good matchup to have, uh, you know, Alfred Morrison as well. And with all the buys, you're more more than likely going to have to. Yeah, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right, guys. Uh, you know, I think that's really about it as far as the big news stories. I want to get into the game. So okay. let's jump into it. Real quick, though, I think we're skipping a very important move that happened this week that really not a whole lot of people are talking about right now. And that's the Seahawks got Ethan uh, Pokic, or Pochik. I, I can't remember his name. Please, please do tell. Uh, he's he's a really good offensive lineman. I think he's going to really fit into that team. They're they're just they keep on adding pieces to that team. I really think that the Seahawks are going to be a very legit, very tough team to beat for the rest of the season because they're starting to get people in there that are protecting Russell Wilson. I don't know. I felt it was worth noting. Yeah. They, they made but some they moves on their offensive get, line. They still can't get a running game going. Well, and I don't think that that's yeah, their well, intention. I don't think that they're going to yeah, try to get a running game going. I think they're going to be a pass-heavy team here on out. But I think yeah. we're going to have a pass-heavy team with a Russell Wilson that has some time now. Yeah, and and that's and I'm totally fine with that. I mean, this is typical of the Seahawks. I mean, aside from the running game, but this is typical of the Seahawks to be uh, making moves in the middle of the season and and just you know this is when they start to begin. They they begin to be hot at this time of the of the year. Yeah, they start to pass the ball a lot. I mean, it's kind of their thing. They start off slow, yada yada. But I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I I'm you know I I agree. I think they're the probably the best team in that division. But I mean, I'm I'm also pretty smitten with the Rams. So I mean, mm-hmm. I think I, th- I like the Rams. I think, yeah, I think yeah. I think it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a coin toss between those two. Yeah, I agree, a hundred percent. I think All Seattle right, I like toast the... the Rams though. <laughs> What's that? I think Seattle will toast the Rams though. Unfortunately. Yeah, I, I, I the, yeah, I don't like the uh, inconsistency. If the if if the Rams can start being consistent, then they you know watch out for them. I guess whatever. Uh, let's go on to the games guys got a lot going on so first game up atlanta at carolina panthers so uh we just talked about the panthers talked about the receiving game you know listen if you got antonio brown out stefan diggs brandon cooks you know you're gonna be missing plenty of receivers this week so don't hesitate to have to start Devin Funches in your lineup. I think this is going to be probably one of his best weeks, you know, considering that nobody else is really going to be prepared, I think, to take over for Kelvin Benjamin at the moment. Yeah, he's forced in that role. I think if you have Funches, you definitely should be starting him. Yeah, I mean, so in this game, I mean, I like, I like Cal- uh, well, not Kelvin Benjamin, obviously. Devin Funches, Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> Cam Newton, I mean, uh, I think I guess Cam Newton probably, has a good game. Yeah, I guess you're gonna have to start him because it's his division rivalry game. It always feels like when I'm looking at an NFC South division rivalry game, they're always high scoring. I don't know, is that just me, or or does it seem that way? Yeah, and this one should be one of those games. Although I think Atlanta, man, they look pretty stagnant on offense. They're gonna have to really pick some stuff up if they're gonna want to mm-hmm. get going. At Carolina probably isn't a good place to start either. No, no. Uh, it, it, you're right. It might be a one-sided offensive affair at this point, but I don't know. Yeah. Two, two um, previously high-powered offenses, right, with the Falcons and, and Panthers at, at some point in the past two years have slowed down like crazy. I don't know. It could be, it could, it could be high-scoring still. This could be a week where they turn it around finally. We'll see. The only thing is the Panthers' defense has looked stout this season. Yeah, That's what's been oh, yeah. them in the back. game. Keekly came back yep. last Keek- week, and they looked really good with him yep. in there. They, that really shuts down your run, shuts down your tight end, shuts down your short routes. I mean, he is just such a game changer. Who Who do you think – do you think Julio scores this weekend? Uh, I do. I do. Either of you. Yeah, okay. I, I could see him getting a touchdown – I mean, uh, you know, one, he ain't going to do more than that. You know, maybe, maybe gets, maybe I say, I'll, I'll put this stat line out there. I'm going to project okay. he gets, I'm going to project he gets four catches, 60 yards and a touch. Okay. That's can't, can't disagree. That, that sounds very, that sounds very accurate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. 16 <laughs> points in a PPR league. I think you'll, you'll take it. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you will take it. Take it, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's it's took. It's, it's took. It's <laughs> All right, guys. Um, well, let's. Yeah. yeah. What's up? No, I, I was I was gonna say who. I mean, I, I I guess we don't have to say this, but I guess if you're on the if you have anybody from the Panthers, you're starting. Are you starting Cam? I mean, we're we're starting McCaffrey and starting Devin Funches. Right. I mean, I I can't I can't vouch for you to start Jonathan Stewart. I can't say on the Falcons side. I mean, I think you're starting Devontae Freeman and Julio Jones. Obviously, I think you could flex in Mohamed Sanu just because uh, it's yeah. you know a lot of buys this week, yep. so you might have to. Tevin Coleman, you could also Tevin flex Coleman. in there. I think Tevin Coleman will have a role, especially being uh, uh, you know you're hearing some reports about um, Freeman being hurt. Uh, so he's he's listed as questionable, I think, right now. So Tevin could have a role in this game for sure. Yeah, and this is yeah, it's a great time to be a Tevin Coleman owner because if uh, if Devin um, Devontae Freeman has to miss any time, you definitely got gold there, and mm-hmm. you know that can definitely help you out this season. Uh, let's move on though to the next game, guys. Indy at Texans. Man, I I this game was man. I thought Deshaun Watson was going to have a huge game this week, and then yeah. Damn. I mean, it sucks. I think they but, should still roll him out there with a bad ACL just to see how he does. <laughs> have him on crutches. There you go. <laughs> you need that morale. They need that morale. I mean, it's the Colts. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so does that mean because the Colts are streaming Tom Savage? <laughs> I, yeah, no. With all these flies? No. Maybe? No, no I'm good. I'd rather start Brock Osweiler. And if you know how oh, hard that is for me to say out loud. Yeah, just... nasty. <laughs> I think I just threw up. I did, a little bit. <laughs> well, listen, it, it, this game, I, you know, you start. You got to still start Lamar Miller and DeAndre Hopkins. As we mentioned, Will Fuller, it's going to be tough with the buys, but I really don't think you can you can start him anymore but it, it i guess it, it, it suppose it depends on who you have right i mean because you, you might not have better than will fuller out there on your bench this is true i mean true. i i think i mean I, but but will fuller was also a waiver wire pickup too so you never know maybe you do have something on your bench obviously they weren't better than fuller but you have no choice now uh, right well and then with the bye week though too you have to you know you also have to think about yeah, like, true. like I mean, think think of this, like, uh, you know, you got Will Fuller there. Are you going to start Will Fuller or Cooper Cup this week? Or Cooper Cup. I, I think I'd start Cooper Cup in that. Can you imagine what would happen if Fuller pulls down two more <laughs> TDs this week? <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's oh, going to be amazing. Cooper, Man, it's going to uh, be a boomer bust. It's going to be a boomer bust for Fuller. What about what about Will Fuller and Nelson Aguilar this week? I think I like Nelson Will Aguilar Fuller has there. Denver. Yeah, I like Fuller. Oh, interesting. <sighs> it's Richard, just because it's just a Denver defense. Richard Matthews or Will Fuller? <laughs> I'd have to go Richard Matthews. Oh, Will Fuller. I forgot Tennessee has Will the Fuller. Ravens. Yeah, and Corey Davis is back. You know, I don't know how they're going to – I just don't know how they're going to deal with that. Oh, all right. So we're not as down, I guess, on Will Fuller as I expected. So – it sounded to me like you guys think we could you could flex him. Yeah, I I think so. I think you proved it right there. Yeah. yeah. All right. With all the buys, especially with all the buys, I guess. All right. Well then, guys, there it is. Flex him. I mean, I I, I don't think it's going to work out for you, but flex him and could surprise us. You gotta hope. You gotta hope. Pray to God. Tom could go macho man savage on you, you know? <laughs> All right. And the Colts, guys, I mean, I think I think I would start Marlon Mack this week in my lineup as a flex option. Yeah, yeah. why not? He's, he's been productive. I mean, I don't think this is a great matchup for him. I think the Texans' defense still is, is pretty decent, although, I mean, the Seahawks had a good easy time throwing on them. I still think they're pretty good defense all around. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. I think, uh, you know, you're going to start your T.Y. Hilton. You're going to start your Jack Doyle. Outside of that, though, I can't I can't vouch for anyone else. Maybe maybe Frank Gore is a flex. Uh, I mean, are you – you're starting um, T.Y., Mike? I'm not. Nope. He's sitting yeah. on my bench in my league. I just – he's just too inconsistent. And I mean, yeah, I understand but wait, that he can get three touchdowns. I understand that he can get 200 yards. I understand that he can do all these things. 
But until he starts doing all these things consistently, I have better receiving options at the time. Yeah. Yeah, well, who's who's to, who's to say you're going to have that this week? Yeah. True. Well, I mean, with all the buys. I, well, right. Yeah. And then you not know, to you, mention, you, I mean, T.Y. Yeah. does pretty well against the Texans, historically. I mean, I know it's not with Andrew Luck, so maybe he won't do what he's done in the past. But historically, he's had great games against his Texans defense. Well, they are talking about trying to get him the ball more, and I don't really understand why Brissett can't get him the ball. I can understand yeah. flexing him if you're desperate, but like I said, to me, I'm I'm flexing my running back in this in this league that I have him in, so I'm just not too high on T.Y. right now. I'd like to be. I'd like to see him turn it around, but I, it, the outlook yeah. is not good. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't have Hilton, and I, I can see the frustration. Like, if I can, like, just looking at his box scores, <laughs> I, I, I'd probably bench him too. I, I, I'd be pretty, I'd be a frustrated owner. I tried trading for him. I was going to try trading for him when you know there was those rumors about Andrew Luck could be coming back and whatever and all that. Oh, that's another, that's another piece of news we we didn't touch is that he's he's out. He's he's gone for the season. I'm not even going to trade for him anymore. It's just too inconsistent, and, and the numbers just don't look good. I I don't really want a piece, any part of that. You don't want a piece of that ass. I don't want a piece of that ass at all. <laughs> that blue ass. <laughs> all right, well, let's get to the Bengals-Jags Jags game. And this is a this is a game I think that, man, like it's going to be Leonard Fournette and maybe Marquise Lee and that Jacksonville defense. And that's really – and you're going to start A.J. Green. I don't I mean, know. I, yeah, I guess so. You're going to have to start A.J. Green. I think, I think I'm think i starting Joe Mixon this weekend too. But other than that, I completely agree. Yeah. I think uh, – you know you know who I think has earned my – I don't think he'll have a great game this week, but I think he can be – I think he's becoming more of a consistent starter for me is Tyler Croft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's, he's actually looked pretty serviceable. He hasn't done very like good him. the past couple of weeks, but – He's getting the targets. He's just not getting the receptions. I don't mm-hmm. see him doing very well here. Uh, Jacksonville's no. really tough on the tight end. They're really tough <laughs> on every part of the ball, though, too. So, I, you know, Tyler Croft, he's serviceable, but I, I'm not excited about starting him this week. No, I'm I'm not either, no. but I think going forward for the rest of the season, you know, with the way tight ends have been playing anyway this season, I think that he needs to be owned on ev- on every team. If it's sure. not, you know, at least a bench spot for, you know, a bye week fill in. I'm just saying, like, he, he should be owned. Right. I yeah, I, 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 I agree. He's gonna, he's kind of replacing, I'm not saying he's Tyler Eifer, but he's kind of replacing that role and where they just look for him in the end zone. And that's all you need. That's all you want. That's all you want. So, right. Right. Yeah. All right. Then I'm going to move on to the next game because this is like, you know, we, we covered it. <laughs> yeah, let's go. It's, it's been got. Well, so now what we got. Is Tampa Bay at New Orleans another NFC South showdown? I've been waiting for Winston to just break off, and he's just not doing it. He's getting well, he yards. He kind of did. He kind of getting he yards. Broke, he broke his shoulder, so that's like breaking <laughs> off, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Jameis Winston has been probably one of my more disappointing calls of the season. I really thought with the offensive changes, like a lot of people, by the way, so it's not just me, yeah. uh, like a lot of people, we all thought that, you know, this offense is going to come out of the gate, guns blazing, you know, ball being thrown everywhere. I I don't know if it was the storm that really, like, maybe threw them off their game or if this is just the way the team is. Because, you know, it, it, it just, I don't know. It just seems so odd that this team is not playing to the level I expected. Mm-hmm. I I think they put it back together this weekend. I think at New Orleans, I think they're going to have an opportunity to get. I know that offense or that defense has been looking a lot tougher this year, but I think I think Jameis Winston, he's practicing, he's throwing the ball again. I think he'll be in this game. I think he'll actually put it back together. You just cannot keep those weapons down. I'm actually hard pressed to think of anybody I'm not starting in this game. No, yeah, I'm starting everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's nobody I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna say you can't well, start. Well, are you starting Winston? Yes. That's that might be the only one I would say no. I would yeah, start the Winston only one... in maybe it's like the... a two quarterback league. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the only one that I would think. I have to think about yeah. it. Uh, otherwise, everyone else, I am starting. Tampa is one of the most vulnerable defenses. I see Drew Brees having at least – uh, I don't know why it's hard for Breeze to get three touchdowns in a game. They just run the damn ball too much. This can be a game where he does get three touchdowns, and so Winston will have to catch up. Uh, Listen, man, he, the reason Drew Breeze can't throw more than a, than a one touchdown in a game is because the Bears <laughs> shut him down, son, last week. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, listen, I am, I am still mad about that game. Yo, I am still mad about that game because that touchdown call that they reversed for Zach Miller – was bullshit. Did you guys see that? Did you guys see the touchdown? Uh, I'd have to look at the replay. I can't remember it. Yeah, I mean, that was the here. play that Zach that Zach lost Miller his leg. broke. Yeah. Oh my god. You didn't even oh, see that. I heard that. I, I didn't, didn't want see to. It. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't look it. at it as a catch though. I was looking at his knee the whole time. Well, <laughs> it was completely a catch. So I'll I'll detail it for you guys, just for a second. He Quickly. caught the ball, right? Comes down. The ball does not, you know, bobble. It doesn't come out of his arms. He lands on the ground back first. And then when he's on the ground, he takes the ball and places it next to him. Oh, that's okay. a touchdown. And they, and they said, and they said he did not maintain control of the ball. Mm. The officiating this year has just been just so bad. Terrible. Like, just yeah, so, so bad. bad. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! They need to do a whole sweep. They, should, they need to yeah. do a whole sweep. Yeah, they should be embarrassed. They have yeah. video. I'm watching the same thing they're watching. I'm no expert in this stuff, but I'm watching and I'm like, that's pretty obvious. And they still get it wrong in New York. I'm like, how in the hell do you guys have you know a job? What? Because still? because they have to back up their own team. The refs have to back up the the, the ones in New York. The, these managers and you know the Chiefs or whatever they gotta they gotta protect. The, their own they're gonna they're gonna back up their bad calls which is terrible but they're gonna do it yep exactly well speaking of, speaking of new york new york let's go to the new york giants who are home against the la rams battle of the coasts here and you're gonna start todd Gurley. i think this is a good matchup for cooper cup i like this i like this game for him i can't i can't trust sammy watkins even with janoris jenkins out this week i think he starts sammy watkins this week i think he's a startable yeah. player i just keep seeing golf barely miss him on these great long routes and you just know it's coming and i think it'll come this week with jenkins out that was crazy i don't know why you'd have to suspend that guy but <laughs> he got suspended i didn't, I didn't even know that yeah, yeah. Got, oh I, I, violation of yeah. team rules suspended well, indefinitely out. yeah mm. well he walked out on the team mm, okay uh, yeah, yeah well i, I said uh, yeah. yeah, I say start Watkins. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not as confident in starting Watkins, but I, as I think about it, and again, you know, as we brought up the buys, I can see why that you know you probably would have to start Sammy Watkins this week at least in your flex. I'm just not excited about it. I am. I think he's going to catch two touches. I think he's going to catch two big bombs this weekend. Wow, that's bold. It is yeah, bold. bold. All right. Uh, well, I like Cup. I like Cup. I like Watkins. Uh, of course, we like Gurley. Do we like golf? Is he going to start to be consistent in the second half of the year? Oh, yeah. I think he's a startable quarterback this weekend. Yeah. I don't know about rest of season, but streamable option for sure. I don't yeah. know. I don't like him this week. I, I think that – I don't agree he's going to have two big bombs to Watkins. I think he <laughs> might get – I think he might get one touchdown to one receiver. I don't see this being a big week, though. Uh -huh. Giants defense, even without Janoris Jenkins, plays really well at home. So I don't think this is a, a top-notch, easy matchup for – for golf, I think you might have to with the amount of quarterbacks on by. Maybe you have to start him, but he's not, uh, without a doubt, uh, easy mac easy call matchup for me to be feeling confident throwing him out there. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent on golf yet either. Uh, I mean, he can probably get you know 13, 15, 13, 14, 15 points, fantasy points for you. 16, but, 17, 18, 2? You know, it's 12, <laughs> 11, 10. Maybe even 9. But maybe even 9. <laughs> you know, like, you never know. You just don't know what you're going to get. One thing I do know yeah. is that the only Giants player you're starting is Evan Ingram. I think Russell Shepard might – or Sterling Shepard might be worth a start. Yeah, I guess. 
he, he catches every ball thrown to him. That's what he I does. like about yeah. him. He's he's a target I, I, monster, and he's going to be the only guy out there. True. Yeah. So I guess Sterling Shepard's my second guy, but that's it. And 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 you know he was there before before Ingram. Eli did trust him. It'll be both those. It'll just be those two that I, I would start on my um on my if I had them. Uh, I'd start only those guys from the Giants. Segue here for a second, Julian. What do you think of your team this season, and do you think they win tonight? Oh, uh, Jets and Bills. Um, no, you know what? I think the Bills are going to win. <laughs> and, and are you happy that your team is not the losers of New York? Um, I'm surprised and happy. Yes. I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I can't trust. Like my trust for the Jets is so low. I, I never even want any of them on my fantasy team. And we have some. We got Austin Severian Jenkins, mm-hmm. uh, Robbie answered Robbie Anderson's coming up. McCown somehow is a top ten quarterback. But that's just. So that's just, but but these are temporary. I think these are all temporary. Austin Severian Jenkins is probably the only one that's long term for me that I, I can trust. I think I can trust. You tell me that <laughs> you're telling me the 38 year old Robbie Anderson is not a a staple for the future of the Jets. Oh uh, yeah, he can be a staple. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. At 38. <laughs> 38. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, let's get to the Broncos at Eagles game. Oh man. Brock uh, Osweiler. Yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so that happened and now we have to deal with this, the consequences. I mean Trevor Simeon look he was he was really he slowed down after the first couple of weeks unfortunately and this is now what we have to we have to come to. What do you guys think of this matchup? Is there anybody here you you guys hate that you, you just you can't start this week? Everybody on the Broncos. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That, that you hate, right? Yeah. Well, I love uh, the Broncos. I really do. That's my team. But they're just awful. And with Brock Osweiler at the helm in Philadelphia against that defense, oh, my God, it's going to be a bloodbath over there. Although I did yep. say the same thing when New York was coming to Denver, and New York handled Denver. So <laughs> it could be anybody's Man. game. It is football. But I just do not see Brock Osweiler having much success. I mean, listen – you guys are going to probably have to start Demarius Thomas this week. Let's be yes, real. I agree with that. That's probably the only person I'm starting, though. And um, I think C.J. Anderson, too. Anderson. But the Eagles, we can't underestimate the Eagles' defense. They've been pretty stout. They are, These are going to be, like, the top two. I think these are the top two defenses right now um, playing against each other. Are they? Right? They could be your top three, if not top three. Um, they've been pretty good on, on – uh, the Eagles been – pretty good on their run defense so um, i know the you know, broncos not... have been stout on the run let's see uh... yeah uh yeah so like i said you know both teams uh if not top two the top three and it's gonna be a pretty defensive game but i see eagles winning oh yeah i think this is definitely an eagles win they advance to eight and one which is mm-hmm. pretty incredible this season uh but incredible. yeah yeah especially for the eagles who i didn't see this coming at all no <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it makes the Eagles look like they knew something when they traded up to get this Carson Wentz kid, huh? Yeah. So, so now, so now you got. We can talk about the backfield, I guess, a bit. Now you got Jai and Blunt. I mean, I guess if you have these two, you're starting both of them. Yeah, I mean, we covered this a little bit of the news, but yeah, I mean, you know, you're gonna have to probably start a Jai this week just because you know how much better. And I think you can flex Lugarrett Blunt as well. I don't know. I couldn't tell you who's gonna be. The guy there this weekend, I would assume, I would assume it's like an ugly 50-50 split, but don't expect a lot anyway because it's the Broncos defense against the run. They've been one of the best, so I can't I can't say that this is going to be a uh, breakout game for Jay Jai. Mm-hmm. And you know you're gonna start your boy Zach Ertz out there. Been mm-hmm. a great great tight end this year oh he'll be great huge tight this end. week broncos are really weak against the tight end here's a little fun yep. fact philadelphia 23rd defense in the league overall overall the 23rd what about right so how's it run- i'm as that, flabbergasted read as you dude right now i'm like wow <laughs> philadelphia i might have but I, I, what about their run defense because i think that's probably what i read uh, we'll select rush. Are you sure? Are you sure you read it? Are you, or are you sure? Are you sure it wasn't nothing? The third best <laughs> yeah. against the run. Maybe something's wrong with my eyes. Yeah. They are the third best against the run. That is correct. There we go. Uh, okay. Cool. Who's who's okay. who's? <laughs> my eyes like, work. 
Mike, in, inform us and the rest of the fans out there, who's the top five defenses in the, in the season? Uh, top five overall defenses, so we're going to say yards is what that category is. <laughs> so you got Denver, Cincinnati, Jacksonville, Carolina, and Miami, which is a shocker. Wow. That's a shocker. Yeah, Miami hasn't really played anybody, though. So, I mean, you know. Well, we're, we're that's eight, eight games down. We're into week nine. I mean, Miami hasn't even played the Patriots. Yeah, this is true. Who was the fourth? Who was the fourth best? Carolina. Okay, yeah, they're on the come up. Yeah, no, Carolina's defense, especially in fantasy, has been one of the most consistent, I'd say, this season. So you can pass against the Eagles, but you can't pass against the Eagles because you have Brock Osweiler out there. <laughs> so, so you can't run against the Eagles either. Yeah, this is not shaping up to be a good day in Denver. Maybe well, Brock Osweiler. You got to forget, though, too, this guy was meant to be a Bronco. He was groomed to be a Bronco. He, he was in the Peyton Manning system forever, laughed about the small back. contract that they get, wanted to give him and went down to Texas and did really bad. Maybe that was just a different system. Maybe he can do good in this system. I don't see it happening, but it'd be nice. It'd be nice to see some consistency uh, happen in Denver again. It'd be a dream come true for him, I think. That's that's, <laughs> And for the organization. <laughs> right. If he can just throw it near them, I'm going to be pretty excited. Yeah. <laughs> well, here, you know, speaking of dreams come true, how about wouldn't it be a dream come true to get any fantasy production out of the Ravens' offense? Oh my! At all this season? <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's our next game. Ravens in yeah. in Tennessee. Good segue. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is uh, you got Alex Collins maybe after his performance last week, but he still hasn't scored a touchdown, so it's not like you're excited. Jeremy Macklin, I think you you'll have to throw in there. How crazy is this? Joe Flacco is most likely going to be playing in this weekend's game after the hit he got. No, oh, yeah. Dude, Joe Isn't Flacco's a beast. You can love him or hate him, but that guy is such a monster on the field. Like, he's just – if he could do everything he wanted, he would be a Super Bowl champion every year. Do you guys watch – do you guys follow um, bar, Barstool Sports at all? I don't. No. Um, they they they, uh, they 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 got a pic- they caught a picture of Flacco after he got hit and he's on the ground and the, the first thing he does after he gets hit is like he points his finger up like he's trying to get up and he's like pointing his finger up I guess he's trying to let his coaches know that you know some he needs to get looked at or whatever but he's pointing his finger up and they and they got this still picture of him and then they just captioned it that's check, awesome please. check 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 please. Check, please. <laughs> <laughs> that was the caption. It was just fun. <laughs> you, you, you got DeMarco Murray back this week, so you're going to start DeMarco Murray. Uh, we got, you know, Corey Davis. I understand he's coming back this week. Doesn't mean I'm starting him. I'll I pick don't, him up off waivers, but you're not throwing him out there. I don't think you start him this week. I think he's a completely a stash and hold and see what he yeah. does, see how he fits in with this offense. You're against the Ravens. The Ravens are nasty against the pass, so – you don't want to deal with that with Corey Davis week one. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to roll them out this week, but get them on your team before it's too late. Yep, I completely agree. And uh, please, for my own fantasy team, let's give Delaney Walker a good game, huh? Yes, if he plays. Yes. Yeah. Just play. Please. Just play. God, <laughs> God damn it. <sighs> well, I, I, I think and I think Alex Collins can probably find the end zone this week. It's it's only a matter of time. You would hope so for the guy, right? I mean, but that's the but yeah, that's the only guy. I mean, Buck Allen, if you're also desperate. Uh, well, and as I mentioned, Jeremy Macklin. All mm-hmm. right, Cardinals at 49ers. Who? <sighs> Sorry, I almost threw up a little. Who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, listen. I think the Garoppolo news is interesting for when he finally starts. I think he can make the team around him a bit better. But then again, who's to say? You know, we've seen this yep. guy only play with the Patriots, so yep. in very limited fashion. So who knows how this is going to turn out? But yep. uh, as far as this game is concerned, you're getting Pierre Garcon out there, you're getting Carlos Hyde out there, and uh, for the for the Cardinals, we're going to see Drew Stanton leading the way, and that leaves you really Adrian Peterson, maybe, and Larry Fitzgerald. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't like our so much just because of Patrick Peterson and because they don't really have a quarterback. So I don't know if I'm uh, starting. Hello, uh, they have CJ Beathard. Right, whoever that is. 
<laughs> so and so they got that guy, and I, I don't even yeah. So I'm probably benching Garcon. I have Garcon one of my leagues, but I, yeah, I would bench Garcon. Uh, well, I would I definitely got... bench Garcon because it just broke yep. that he is on the IR and out for the season. What? That just broke. Are you lying? I'm wow. not. Tells a Staley likely back after bye. Wide receiver Pierre Garcon to IR next. Oh Done my for God. you. All right, I'm dropping him right now. <laughs> I think wow. I have a couple trades out for him that I have to go pull right now. Oh, except, except. <laughs> How wow. crazy is that? Wow, breaking news. We need a, we need, we need, I hope we have a sound bite for breaking. Uh-huh. You see that? There you go. I got it. I got it. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. So yeah, all right. So you're dropping Pierre Garcon because you don't need him. Who takes over those receiving am... option? Do you got Marquise Goodwin, George I'm... Kittle, the tight ends? I'm or quickly... nobody. I'm quickly gonna add Kenny Galladay. <laughs> Kenny Galladay. <laughs> yes, yeah, flyer. You never know. Okay. <laughs> okay. What? Okay. Who? Who? Who benefits from this? Is that what? Yeah. You're I mean, yeah. George Kittle, Marquise Goodwin, Aldrick Robinson. I think. I think Marquise Goodwin and uh, I really like Kittle. I think Kittle's been getting involved. I like Kittle a lot when Garoppolo gets back, or gets on, not back. Gets back on it. Gets back That's on it. That really <laughs> sucks. I so don't many, know. Like, when did that happen? So many heartbreaking, though? heartbreaking news. I have I no, no idea. I mean, no, I mean, just like I didn't know he had a neck issue at all. He got it during the week uh, or, or during the game. I think he suffered that. Oh, in, really? During last weekend's game. Yeah. Well, I must have missed that. Damn. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, well, listen, we got a couple games to power through before we have to wrap it up. So let's do it. Let's get to it. I'm going to skip a couple games here because, you know, is what it is. But remember, guys, if you have any questions about any of these games and we've missed out on them, you guys can always reach out to us on sleepwire.com and email us through there. Or you can reach out to us on Sleeperbot or Twitter, and we'll give you guys all that info in just a little bit. Let's just get to the Kansas City-Dallas game, the game that should be the damn Sunday night game because it's atrocious. Then we got to watch the Raiders at the Dolphins as the Sunday night game. Brutal. Brutal. Yeah, brutal. That is, that is a brutal game. I think Kansas City play. Dallas is going to be fire. I think that's going to be a great game. Should be a great game. Dak Prescott will bounce back, I believe, from his terrible performance last week. Even with Zeke pro- probably suspended, I st- still think they're going to have to now rely on Dak 100%. So, yeah, I expect this to be another uh, big game for Dak Prescott. I mentioned Kansas City is not really a tough defense. You're starting all your Chiefs. Uh, Tyree Kill has had this annoying habit of having one big week, one small week, one big week, you know, flip-flopping. So this week should be a big yeah. week. Yeah, I, I, thankfully I've been playing him pretty wise. All the games that he did kind of bad, I benched them just because my wide receiver depth was pretty was pretty good. So I, I was able to do that, but um, it was just matchup based. It was just matchup based when, 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 when I did that. So yeah, all the good matchups, just he'll be fine. Uh, it, it, it was just the bad. It was, it was uh, let's see. And this Denver, should be a good matchup, right? Yeah, this yeah, this is perfect. This he had Denver, Pittsburgh, Washington, all great defenses where he had bad games. And uh Philadelphia, that was the only surprising one this week too, but you know. He'll be fine this week. All right. So yeah, and Dallas I expect you to be starting, you know, Des Bryant, Jason Witten, you know, maybe flex out Terrence Williams. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah I don't like I don't like Terrence Williams, but yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fan either, but I just keep thinking about the buys and people might have them. So mm-hmm. it's not our favorite. He might not. He yeah. might not do much for you. Might lose you the game, but it's an option for sure. Right, desperate situations, yes. All right, and last game, I'm gonna talk to you guys about. I'm sorry, I'm skipping that Sunday night game. <laughs> it's brutal. I mean, one thing I'll leave you with is because people who you know lost AJI to the Eagles, maybe looking for a running back this week. In PPR, I say you pick up Damian Williams. He's the mm-hmm. only guy I can tell you he's probably going to benefit the most. Uh, you know, they'll tell you Kenyon Drake's a starter, but uh, you know, look at look at what the history's told you. I mean, you know, Chris Thompson broke out because he's the receiving uh, running back there. You've had Jarek McKinnon. You know, so all these situations, it's always been the other guy. So 
which tells you that probably Darren McFadden's going to end up being the guy, and I'll be <laughs> wrong about Alfred Morris. Because that's just that's my life. Well, I like um I think I, I think Derek Carr and the Raiders turned it around again. Uh, well, I mean they're they've been okay, but I think Derek Carr has a good game. Cooper and Crabtree, all them guys. I, as far, yeah. I was as far as as far as the backfield and as far as Lynch and you know, and um the other guy Washington. What do you guys think? How the touch is going to be distributed? I feel like Washington might end up with more touches. Go ahead, Mike. I don't think he'll end up with more touches with Marshawn Lynch out there. I think Marshawn Lynch will still get the touches, and I think that leaves Washington and uh, Richard splitting the rest. I think they're both going to be – I think it's going to go back to the way it was as far as that goes. I think this is going to be a air it out game. I think there are going to be a lot of air touchdowns. I think I really like Crabtree. I kind of like Cooper. Devontae Parker's back this week, and I think he's possibly worth a start, maybe just worth a mm. stash. That's scary. Yeah, that's him. gamble. That's a gamble. <laughs> You're a gambler. Uh, that's what I do. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, gross. First off, Devontae Parker not gonna happen. Ain't gonna do it. And then, uh, <laughs> I mean, listen. You're starting Jarvis Landry. You're probably gonna flex Kenny Stills because he's been on it. That that I think you definitely should should do. If you have to. The running backs is I'm concerned. Gross, all around. It's all around gross. Yeah, maybe stash. That's it. See how they use them. But that's all I got. The I'm back. done. All right, guys. Well, that's gonna do it for us here. Uh, what a show. We got through most of the games. We didn't get through all of them. We got through most of them. Ones that really mattered. I mean, listen. As I said before, throughout the entire show, there's something we've missed. Something you still need answers on. Something you want our help with. You can reach out to us on sleepwire.com. We have older episodes on there as well as the rankings. And please, while you're there, go visit Rob's GoFundMe page, gofundme.com slash robjr. There's a link also on the website uh, for you to use so you can get there, read his story. Please donate whatever you guys can. And also, while you're checking out older episodes, please give a listen to the episode where I talk to Rob's dad and Judith Wieg from the Lyme Disease United Coalition. Uh, it was a great interview that I did for them, and they really got their stories out and raise awareness about Lyme disease and what you guys can do to help them out. So please, guys, go check all that out. Julian, where can they find you on Twitter and Sleeperbot and wherever else they can reach out to you? You, know, you can find me on Sleeperbot, Julian SW, and Twitter at JVincent underscore. Um, I, I'll answer any questions you guys bring to me. And you can also reach out, like Nick said, you know, you can reach out to Sleeperwire at, uh, oh, sorry, uh, questions at Sleeperwire.com for, for questions. We'll, you know, try to answer as fast as possible. Mike, where can they reach to you? Uh, you can find me at Dr. Kane on 21 on the Twitter. And you can find me at Dirty Jobs on Sleeperbot. And on Fantasy Life, and you can find me at Dirty Jobs Mike on the Instagrams. On the Instagrams. <laughs> the, the Instagrams of the world. The Instagrams. All right. Well, you guys can find me on Twitter at Sleeperwire Nick, and you can find me on Sleeperbot at SW Nick. That's all the time we got for you guys. Thank you, Julian, Mike, for joining me. Thank you. Always a pleasure, man. Thank you, and good night. All right. For Julian and Mike, I'm Nick Summerall saying so long, everybody. Good night. The champions from the Sleeper Wire Fantasy Football Show will help you win your fantasy football. Sleeper Wire, Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern. Sleeper Wire on Dash Talk.